Welcome to the show. And our today's guest is regarded as one of the most prolific and dynamic motivational speakers and the communities throughout the nation. And he's a he's highly requested by several nonprofit communities and organizations and military venues. And he has served in the military for more than 16 years of his life. So we welcome Christopher Johnson to do Please Round Month. So how are you feeling today? Oh man, I'm blessed. I'm highly favored. Um, it, it, it's another day, uh, you know, on God's green earth, and, and I'm excited and ecstatic to be here uh, talking with you today. Amazing, amazing. Yes, I like. I really like your voice and how it's sounding. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So how? Did really everything got started? How did you went from b- being in military to being a motivational speaker? Okay, uh, just to, you know, add, add some facts for fun. Uh, I'm currently still in the military. I'm still an active duty oh. service member. Uh, just on the, I guess you could say, I'm, I'm not even going to say a hobby. One of my passions in life uh, is inspiring. Uh, the young people, you know, inspired any and everybody uh, that I can. And so uh, the way that came about was was through the military, but the the root and the purpose of how it got started, the reason why I speak uh, really stems from my childhood. You know, both my parents being deaf, uh, my father's deaf, my mother's hearing impaired, and me, my brother, and my sister can talk. Uh, but my aunties and my uncles, uh, my first cousins, uh, all they, they are all deaf. Their mother and fathers can hear and talk, but they came out deaf. So it skipped, you know, me and my siblings. And so, uh, you know, I'm older now. And as I look back at life, I said, why did it skip me? And when I understand uh, purpose, when I understand the reason for living, then I understand I'm, I'm living in my purpose now. So it skipped me and God gave me the voice and the ability to uplift, to inspire and to motivate others, especially uh, young brothers and sisters uh, of the world. So uh, in, in, in a short uh, frame, that's how, uh, that's how it came about. Okay, that's very good. So how was it growing up in, when everyone was unable to hear? So like, how was your experience growing up? So like, what challenges or difficulties did you face? Um, I think the challenges I faced growing up in a deaf household were more of outside society, you know, society not being accustomed to the deaf culture. And, and, you know, I had to sign at medical appointments. I had to sign at uh, court appointments. Uh, Even when it was parent teachers conference meeting, imagine you signing to your parents, right? Uh, and you're the one in trouble, you know? The, the, the school called your parents to come, you know, talk to them, and there's really a barrier there where they really don't know what they're saying. But yet, so so really I'm in charge of my own fate. Uh, but nevertheless, it was an integrity check. Uh, it was, I had to grow up real fast. I had to take on responsibility real fast. And helping my mother and my father uh, in our household just thrive the way that it did. Um, and to prevent people from taking advantage of them. So that was another challenge. People would try to take advantage of them, sometimes charge more than they should, or try to get over on on some extra dollars when it came to paying rent or even on a car uh, car note and uh, things of that sort. So um, very, um, I I tell you, it was challenging, but... uh, I had more good times. I had more fun times. I had more blissful times than I had uh, adversity and challenges. Uh, I didn't even, to be honest with you, I didn't even, I I didn't look at it as a downfall. You know, I I was just living uh, my best life uh, like any other uh, child. That's really, really great. Yeah, that's how people shape, like we shape ourselves. Like that's how the world and the society shape our lives. And so, like, uh, as you said, like, this was a blessed, blessing for you. So, like, which moments th- that you recall were the most blissful for you? The most blissful? Yeah. Uh, 
one of the most blissful moments in my life was um, seventh grade. Seventh grade, uh, I tried out for the football team and went out there. Matter of fact, no, it was football practice. And I was going against this guy named, uh, I want to say his name, Royce Francisco. And uh, there was a drill where you laid on your back. And then when the coach blew the whistle, you had to hurry up, flip over, and who can tackle whoever first, you know, the hardest. And that was my first time ever being tackled. And I got so mad and I start crying and things of this sort. And my father was at that practice. And my dad comes and because he can't talk, right, uh, any majority, I'm not gonna say all, but the majority of deaf people make some type of noise in their attempts to communicate and talk. And so my father has a very deep bass voice and he yelling, oh, and he grabs my helmet and he bangs it against his, his head. He has, my, my dad has on no helmet and he bangs it against his head and he slaps my helmet and he's yelling at me like, you're a Jackson, you're better than this, you're stronger than this, get back in there and do it again. And so we ran the drill again and I tackled the guy and his helmet came off. And everybody went crazy. And my coach was like, I want your dad at every game down there, you know, in the, in the, in the, ble- you know, uh, at the bench with us, cheering us on and being a part of the team. And that was probably one of my memorable moments, uh, you know, as, as a kid, my, my father there just motivating, inspiring me uh, along the way. That's really interesting. That's really, really, really inspiring, you know. So, like, are, were there any other situations where uh, you had this feeling that, or uh, like, really inspiring feeling, basically? Uh, to, to be honest with you, my, my childhood, growing up, um, was an experience in itself. I, I, I've been blessed to have several opportunities at the age of, you know, nine to 12, 9 to 13 years old, where um, my, my grandmother on my mother's side, who doesn't know sign language, but she's a choreographer in high school. She's a high school uh, principal, history teacher, RN, blah, blah, blah. And um, she connects me with these people. Um, Yolanda Adams, Patti LaBelle, Gladys Knight, Mariah Carey. And I'm a young boy on stage with these people at the Cynthia Woods Pavilion. And I'm doing sign language on stage, you know, for the deaf. Uh, here I am, 34 years old. I can't tell you at, at that age that I really knew who those people were at that time. I just knew I'm signing. You know, my grandmother wants me to sign. She wants me to choreograph. And, and that's what I was doing, signing, adding some expression to my signs, so that the deaf were able to receive my message to their eyes the way that we hear music to our ears. Um, and some of those greats that I just mentioned, when I look back at it, I say, wow, I really was, you know, uh, with Gladys Knight. I really was with Patti LaBelle, you know. Uh, I got to perform Hero with Mariah Carey. Uh, and these are just a few opportunities that I, I got to perform on uh, black Entertainment TV uh, on the Bobby Jones Gospel Sunday doing His Eyes on a Sparrow by the Mississippi Children's Choir. So, you know, that, and that's a small part, but I, I, I'm saying because of, you know, not, not because of my parents being deaf, but because of a gift that God gave me, you know, through, through doing sign language, I was able to access a lot of other platforms and, and use a, a, a larger platform to reach uh, the masses in such a way. And so I, the way I think that interprets now is I still sign, I still tend to do sign language on the platform, but now I use my voice instead of using my hands. I still use my hands, but I use my voice more because I understand that because my parents couldn't hear and God gave me a voice. It's the voice that's going to resonate with the people. Um, what's her name? Maya Angelou. She has a quote 
paraphrasing, but it says, uh, people don't remember uh, what you said. People don't remember what you did. But people will always remember how you made them feel. And so when I, when I talk to people, I try to leave something with them that's compassionate, leave something with them that's inspiring and that uplift their spirits. So even if I don't see you again, two, three years from now, five years from now, if I come up, you'll always remember how I made you feel. Absolutely. So how, how can someone like who doesn't have any experience in speaking, so how can someone make anyone else feel through his, his speech? Could you, could you ask that question again, sir? I'm yeah. Uh, so, so let's say I'm not a speaker, like I haven't spoken uh, in the past. So now if I want to make someone feel, how can I do that? Through my speech. Oh, man. Yeah. If you if you're not if you're not a speaker and you want to uplift or you want to encourage someone else, but speaking is really not your thing, right? Uh, it's in it's in the doing, right? It's in the doing. It's in it's in the service. Service is um, the core of America. Service is the core of people. I'm in the United States Army. Service. The Army didn't force me to come. I wasn't drafted. I volunteered to serve. I had a purpose to serve, which is, you know, my children and so forth and so on. But through my service, um, you uplift others. Some, sometimes it's, it, it's something simple. They say chivalry is dead. I don't believe it's dead, right? Something simple as uh, you going to a grocery store, right? And somebody's in front of you and you open up the door for them. You say, thank you. You know, uh, you see an elder lady that's carrying the bags and she's probably 67, 70 years old. And you walk up, man, let me help you with your bags, right? Um, that's the feeling that's developed in that moment, right? Where a woman says, well, that, you know, a man, woman, whoever you have, they say, man, that's mighty nice of him to do that, right? That's a feeling, right? You don't have to speak to do that. Service, right? And there's a thing uh, by Robert Greene, it's called servant leadership, right? People say, ah, I need to be in position to be a leader. I need to be, you know, I, I need to get promoted. I need to rank. I need a big platform to be influenced, you know, to be an influencer, to be, no, you just serve. Service people out of the character of who you are. Uh, and I think uh, you definitely will impact people in such a way that they'll never forget how you made them feel. That's really good. Yeah, I, I really like the small details you focus, you mentioned that like we, these things are happening every single day and around us. It's not like we don't have to travel a lot. And if we just look at it through us angle where we want to help, we can like make a lot of people feel good, like a bit better, let's say. And that's, every, that's everything matters. Yeah, you can always you can always brighten someone's day. Just small gestures, small just. Hey, how you doing? Good to see you. You look good today. Know some new shoes. Hey, just small gestures will uplift somebody, will inspire somebody, uh, will add a pep to their step, make their head, you know, put their head up a little bit, get their back straight, have their chest out. And say, yeah, you know what? I do look good. He's right. You know. Uh, and that's what it's about. It's about fostering and creating a positive environment wherever you at, right? A lot of people tend to be a thermostat. I will tend to be a thermometer, a thermostat, right? So a thermostat adjusts with the temperature, right? So right now I'm in Detroit, Michigan. Yesterday, it was like 90 degrees. Today, this morning, is snowing outside, right? <laughs> if I walk outside, right, if I walk outside, I say, man, it's cold, right? But if the core of who I am, right? If I walk outside, I say, man, it's hot out here. They're like, man, you crazy. It's snowing. It's like 20, 20 degrees outside. I'm like, yeah, but the snow has no effect on who I am on the inside, right? The snow, had, I'm, 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 a, I'm a thermostat. I control my environment, not my environment control me. So you got a bunch of thermometers walking around. That's why I'm pretty sure you day in and day out of your daily activities, you probably meet some people and they're like this. One day they're high, next day they're low, they're high, they're low, they're high. 
because they adjust with what, what's going on in life. But when you harvest in who you are, right, and you say, no matter what anybody else does, no matter what going on in the world, I'm going to be me. I'm going to stay true to myself. Then you get a constant ball that goes across that screen and say, well, one thing I can say about Chris Jackson, he crazy, but he's consistent. You know, you know what you get versus the up and down yo-yo effect. So be a thermostat and not a thermometer. Okay, so how can someone turn from being a thermometer to a thermostat? So the, the, the one thing you have to do that in, in what I tell people, um, you know, on my platform, uh, Team Stay Motivated and the way that I inspire the youth, uh, one of the biggest things that I like to talk about and pillars I like to use is purpose, right? You have to understand your why. You understand? If you don't understand your why, um, at least work towards understanding why does, why, why am I here? Why am I on earth? Why am I here just to live and then die? Right? It is, it's, you know, what, what year were you born, sir? What year were you born? Uh, 2003. 2003. Okay, you were born in 2003. I was born in 1986, right? So you got, you got 1986, right? And then you got whatever day God's going to call me home, right? Let's say 2070 something. I don't know, right? Let's just, we throw something out there, right? I got my start date and my end date. A lot of people believe that when you're born and when you die are the most important dates, right? That that are the tide turners from going from a thermos, from a thermometer to a thermostat. But it's not true. The only thing that matters, it's not when you're born and it's not when you die. It's that dash that's in the middle, right? It's that dash that's in the middle. That's on your tombstone, right? When people go up, it's the dash that has more significance than the day you were born and the day that you died. What did you leave? What did you do? Who are you? What, what are you living to do, right? And if you continue to live and say it's about me, 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 you're going to miss the message, right? You're going to miss... Purpose is always bigger than you. Purpose is always greater than you. Purpose is to serve others. When you think of some of the great athletes out there, Michael Jordan, LeBron James, football players, I don't know, Bo Jackson, Deion Sanders, uh, tennis players, Serena Williams, Tiger. When you look at any of these athletes, right? Yeah, they're making money and they're doing what, what's fun for them. But what's more important that they're living in their purpose is there's a young man, there's a young woman, that's sitting on the sideline that's watching them, right? When Michael Jordan went to do the layup or went for a dunk and he stuck his tongue out, uh, right? Somebody said, I can do that too. I want to be like Mike, right? That's what Kobe Bryant said, I want to be like Mike. So he watched all the Michael Jordan tapes, mimic everything Mike did, but then he started tailoring to his own life, right? He developed his own style, but Jordan, And his purpose was the one that inspired Kobe Bryant. You see what I mean? So I, I think I think you turn from thermometer to thermostat by purpose. Your why? It's I think life is very difficult to live if you don't understand your why. If you don't understand what am I doing on earth? Who am I? If you can't really answer those questions, I think it's difficult to live. But to answer your question, sir. Yeah. From thermostat from thermometer to thermostat. Uh, yeah. It's knowing your why, knowing your purpose that will change that around. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Uh, so now next. Um, so, like as you said, like which who is your favorite athlete? So you you're into fitness, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. So so my favorite athlete um, by far is is LeBron James. Why is LeBron? Um, not only because of basketball. But my LeBron James is my favorite athlete because he represents um, probably, you know, everything that I would aspire to be. You know, he's a husband. He's a father. Right. I haven't seen anything derogatory about him in those areas. You don't hear about him cheating a scandal or anything. Uh, with his children, he had, he's at all the, their games when he can be. and He supports them. Uh, and the biggest thing is 
service. He serviced others. He has, he has his own school right there in Cleveland. I promise school, right? Which is those for the less fortunate. Then he's, he even have bikes to transport for uh, their parents to take them to school. He has a food program there. Uh, he is intertwined with the college, um, Ohio, uh, University of Ohio uh, scholarship fund where he paid for 100% full scholarships for a certain portion of high school students. You know, uh, everything that he does outside of basketball is to s- service other people. And he's a voice for the community. He said, I- I'm more than an athlete. I'm more than just a black man who dribbles a basketball. I am, I am somebody, you know, and my voice has meaning. And so I like that he, I like that he uses his, his platform in such a way um, to, to move others and to inspire others. So to me, uh, that's why he's, he's my favorite athlete. Amazing, amazing. Yeah. Absolutely. So now, uh, so how, like, let's talk about the ASL community. So how are you helping the ASL community? Uh, so for me, the way I think I help the, the, the deaf community is uh, I, u- I utilize my platform, me and my brother, um, uh, despite, you know, um, coming from deaf parents, I use my platform to do videos in sign language, I do music videos in sign language. And I don't just sign them a regular, I guess you say, I, I add some expression on it because as I said earlier, I want the deaf to receive the song with their eyes the way we hear music with our ears. And I'm a huge advocate um, for the deaf. And, and one of the major ways um, besides doing songs in sign language in the past, I've advocated for the deaf to join the military. Uh, Not necessarily for combat arms or anything of that sort, but to be a supporter, uh, uh, to work on the support side, admin, human resources, um, finances, uh, culinary arts, uh, these different positions that are in the military. Um, If you go on any base, they have some person of disability that works in those areas. And so, and they're doing the same exact job that soldiers are doing. And so I kind of advocate for the deaf to join. Uh, I did a video a few years back that ended up going viral, hit like four or five million views. Um, We were able to bring uh, Maryland School for the Deaf uh, ROTC program, their their cadets. They got to come to Fort Jackson. They got to get the basic training experience um, to get a piece of what we do in the military, which I I know was a life-changing experience for them. Uh, and, and that's that's the way I advocate. I try to um, at least lead the charge in, in knocking down the doors to say, hey, the deaf, you know, should be afforded this opportunity. And it's not so much about equality as it is being all exclusive, in, inclusive, right? Because equality is, 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 is saying, you know, everybody should have this access, but if you're not on the same playing field, equality will never happen. But all inclusive means everybody is coming in on its totality and everybody has a seat at the table um, to make some type of impact. Got it. Yeah, that, that's really great perspective in terms of getting equality. So like, I didn't think equality in that perspective in previously in my life. Okay, so like, how? What do you say? Like, your mission in life is? Um, I, I I truly think my my mission in life is is truly to inspire. You know, to to motivate. You know, if you if you look real quickly, if you look at the word uh, motivation, right? Uh, root word of motivation is motive, right? Motive says to bring action to. That's what etymology says. Inspiration root word is inspire. It says to bring life into. So my purpose, I believe, is to breathe life into something that someone said is dead. You know, you can look at something that's like, ah, oh, that's dead. Well, the thing that you look at that says dead, I already look at as if, as, if, as if it is already alive. So I want to speak life right, into it to change the situation, right? 
And so I try to encourage, I try to motivate, I try to uplift any and everybody that I can. Uh, it's not a, it's, there's no discrimination, fat, skinny, black, white, orange, purple. I, I, don't, I don't care where you're from. I don't care who you are. If somehow I can change your thinking, if I can uplift you, if I can move you in a positive manner, uh, that's what I want to do. More particularly, young people, right? Because the older we get, the harder it is for us to change our habits in the way of thinking. But if I can get you very young, you know, if I can get you at eight years old, if I can get you in your early teenage years, I can at least plant the seeds so that when you do get older, you can blossom and become who you're, who you're destined to, to be. That's, that's, a great, that, that's really great mission. So, so let's say like, uh, what is the one myth about your industry or, pro or profession so that you want to debunk? Um, one, uh, one myth about motivation, motivational speaking is uh, that is easy. That is easy. That, that you know, all you got to do is get on the platform, speak, do a nice video, post it, and you'll be viral overnight. No, no, no. That is, that is, that is totally a myth. You, you know, uh, people think that, but you can do a motivational video and post and have 20 views, may have only one like, and you can't quit because you're not getting the views or the algorithm is not working the way that you want it to. Um, that's why my, my trademark is the message ain't for everybody, but you know it's for somebody, right? And the reason why that's powerful is all you need is one. Right. All I need is one. If I can reach one person, I've done my mission. If you if you're dictating your views and likes based off of what you do, then that's not your purpose. That's not your mission, because you're allowing the algorithm of social media to dictate who you are and what you do day in, day out. It has to be who you it has to be in the character. Of you. It has to be embedded in your veins that no matter if it's one person watching or if it's a million people watching what you see is what you get. So uh, the, to debunk the myth is, it, it ain't easy. It's not easy. Yeah, okay, that's great. So this is a, this is a question that I always ask. Uh, so what is learning and education to you? Uh, so learning and education to me uh, it is really not institutionalized, right? I don't, I don't think learning and education is institutionalized. It is based off dictionary definition society. But I think learning and education is life lessons, right? You learn every day, every day just through doing. You, we learn watching others. There, there's, I've learned, you're 23, and I'm pretty sure you can agree with this. There's more that you've learned out of school and just living your life than you learn when you were in institutionalized school, right? Because half the stuff that I've learned through institutionalized school hasn't even applied to me yet. I, I, I don't remember sitting down doing no problem solving and, and algebra and all, that doesn't apply to me. Calculus, that don't apply to me. That Yeah, I, I get some education in that field. It, it's to check the block to say I passed the test, but I didn't really learn that. You know what I learned? I learned when I went off on my own. I learned when I said, hey, I want to join the military. I learned when it was, look, when it was time for me to have my own car note and have my own house. Uh, more importantly, if you want to get serious, I learned and got the education when it was time to go to Iraq and Afghanistan, not knowing if I was going to come back dead or alive. I, lear I learned life real quick in a whole nother way. So what, what learning and education is to someone else uh, is different for me. Yeah, Don't get me wrong. I, I, I think you should get, get your diploma, get your degree, because those things open up multiple opportunities for you to, you know, maybe get the job that you want. But in terms of learning and education for life, uh, I think there's no other. The best way of learning is Hard Knocks Academy. When you go to Hard Knocks Life Academy, that's the best learning that you can get. Uh, so that's what I say. Yeah, amazing. Amazing. So where can our listeners find you online or offline? Okay. So um, if you go to uh, my website, which is www.tsmmovement.com, 
right? That's that's my website. You know, you can request me to speak. You can look at some of the uh, people that that I've uh, uh, worked with or, or some of the organiza- organizations where I spoke at. Um, on Instagram, I'm actually going through a little uh, reconstruction and whatnot, but on Instagram, if you go to uh, team underscore stay motivated, if you go now, if you go there now, you're not going to find me. But like I said, I'm going through uh, a reconstruction uh, and it, it'll be there. I have about 18,000 followers on there. So if you go to team underscore stay motivated, uh, you'll see that if you go on YouTube and you put in team stay motivated, I have military videos where I'm, I'm motivating some soldiers. I'm calling some cadence. I got some motivational videos there as well. Uh, and that's probably the three platforms. And for the deaf on Facebook, I have a page. It's probably about say, about 15,000 uh, deaf followers where I do sign language. I'm just interacting uh, and advocating for the deaf. Okay, that's, that's really, really good. So we will put out the links as well with the description of this podcast. So this, yeah, so, and I'm, I'm sure like with the listeners and the people who are watching the video as well, uh, learning a lot from today's conversation. And yeah, and thanks for coming on the show. I highly appreciate your time. And yeah. Oh no, I, 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 I appreciate it. And I want to say unequivocally that, you know, what, what, my organization is what team stay motivated is is it's definitely a mental physical and positive changing movement right it's to change the lives of today to create a better generation for tomorrow so uh it's not just for one genre of people uh it's open it's for everybody you know so i thank you for having me sir yeah you're welcome and that's how you in the show and Thanks for listening, who are listening and people who are watching as well. So bye to your listeners.